We have been interested in this particular um, uh, uh, in this particular group of women with premature heart disease, women with early onset heart disease, because we think that this group of uh, patients may tell us a lot in terms of risk factors and pathophysiology and outcomes of heart disease in women. And uh, there is actually a very interesting paradox regarding women with early onset heart disease. They have a higher mortality and higher complication rates after a heart attack compared to men of the same age. But they do not have a more severe heart disease. If anything, they tend to have less coronary obstruction, they have more better working ventricular function, all the kind of indicators of severity are, if anything, better in, in this population of women with early onset heart disease compared to men. We were interested in the question of whether psychosocial stress may be something that these women may be particularly vulnerable to in terms of the effects, the adverse effects of psychosocial stress on, on the heart. And one indicator of this uh, from previous studies uh, that we have done and other people have done is that women in this particular group, early onset heart disease, have tend to have a lot of more psychosocial stressors. They are more depressed, they have more anxiety, uh, they report more stress in their lives, they tend to be poorer, uh, they're more likely to be from minority groups. Um, so overall, they have more burden of psychosocial stress. And in the other piece is that uh, studies that we have done show that if women have depression, these young women have depression, they have much higher risk of heart disease compared to men of the same age with depression. So these were pieces telling us that perhaps this particular group of women may be especially vulnerable to the effect of psychosocial stress on, on the heart. And because of this, we des design, designed this study to examine whether women, particularly young women, are more likely to develop blood flow malfunction in their heart, what we call ischemia, with mental stress compared with men. We had over 500 patients and over, uh, over 150 women who underwent this protocol, mental stress and physical stress. And we had different age groups, three age groups that we looked at uh, and compared women to men. 55 and younger, 55 to 65, and, six, and then older than 65. We used a, um, uh, a speech task, which is a type of stressor that's commonly used in psychology studies. It's been shown to make people really uh, stressed out. Uh, everybody who has to stand up in front of an audience, he's stressed. Uh, some people are more stressed than others, but uh, so it's an established social stress. The speech in itself was pretty short, three minutes, but um, enough for people to get really stressed, and obviously we monitor blood pressure rate right, throughout, throughout the stress. At peak stress during the speech, they were injected the radio, radio isotope for, for myocardial perfusion imaging, and then we took images uh, later on. The main results of the study showed that, um, first of all, we did not find any differences uh, between women and men in any age group in terms of their perfusion uh, imaging with physical stress. So the, there were no more abnormalities in blood flow in women in any age group compared with men. But with mental stress, we found dramatic differences, particularly in the younger age groups. So women that were 55 years or younger had about three times more perfusion defects than men with mental stress. So more ischemic abnormalities, about three times more compared with men. In the middle age group, between 55 and 65, there was about twofold difference. And there were no differences in patients older than 65 between women and men. So clearly there is a disproportion of ischemia, so abnormalities in blood flow with mental stress, but not physical stress, in young women compared with men, but not older women. One distinctive feature of this population of young women is that they are young, they, they have young families, most of them, children, husbands, they, most of them work out of the house as well. 
And as we know, women, particularly you know, young women, tend to be more likely to take care of maybe older patients, uh, older pa parents mm -hmm. as well. So overall, more uh, duties, uh, uh, more burden of uh, caregiving, and uh, and that's in, that's in the background of having lower socioeconomic resources. You know, that could be one of the uh, driving factors here. I'm not saying that men do not have stress. You know, men also have stress. But perhaps women react more to stress. Uh, they are more sen sen sensitive in terms of their vascular, coronary vascular function to these kind of effects of stress on the heart. There are measures that show that you can really ameliorate your stress, for example, with uh, active and, and um, um, regular physical activity. That's probably the number one uh, best method to deal with stress, which at the same time is also recognized to be uh, a very good measure to alleviate risk of heart disease. But there are other measures, for example, uh, different types of stress reduction techniques, from meditation to deep breathing to muscle relaxation. Um, all those have been shown to be beneficial for mental, you know, for for mental health and improving stress. Not all these con these methods have also been shown to be uh, um, protective towards heart disease. And at the moment, we don't know if these measures are also going to be protective towards mental stress ischemia. Uh, there are some data from other studies showing that, for example, um, treatment of depression may be helpful. Uh, in, uh, use antidepressants in, in some of these patients with metastasis ischemia can reduce the, the, the risk of ischemia. But um, so what is going to be specifically effective on reducing the risk of ischemia with mental stress is going to be the focus of future research has to be.